This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. Time for the European Hot Hatch series, a race event aimed at hot hatches, a type of car popular in Europe. Any cars can enter as long as they are both European and below the performance point limit. So three races, London, Brands Hatch Indy, and Spa Frankishaw. We're gonna go and get ourselves a brand new European Hot Hatch. So let's go to Europe, and I'm gonna go to Avarth, and I'm gonna get myself the 2009 Avarth Grande Punto. Why? I love this car. And the fact that it has an Avarth version, very cool. Pogchamp. It's a shame we don't get the Punto here in the US. Like, we only really get the 500 and like the 124. Those are the only Fiats we actually get in, in this country. Because we have so many different trims of the 500. We have like the 500 XL and whatever. And it's just like, why do we have a minivan ver variant of the 500? It looks ugly and out of place. So anyways, race number one at London. Back to London. The tight city streets. And yeah, even though we just got done with racing Italian cars, we're going to use another Italian car just because I want to. Okay, that's quite a strong opponent field. My car is definitely underpowered compared to them. So I'm going to play the safe game here and buy the Sport Hards. Yeah, because that 140... It mainly it's the Megan, the Golf, and the 147 that I'm afraid of. Okay. I nearly had the Megan. Nearly had him at the end. I don't have any upgrades... Apart from the new tires, but um, we're going to try this again. Nearly won the race, but I screwed up the last corner. Kind of got argy-bargy with the slow me again, but screw it. I think I know why I lost, though. I have, a, I have an excuse. Since this part of London incorporates Piccadilly... All I can think about is the Call of Duty Modern Warfare map Piccadilly and how terrible it is and how much I suck at it. Because every time you walk outside a building or every time you barely spot somebody, you just instantly die because you have no time to react. Because it's too cluttered and there's too much stuff going on on the screen at once. No, in actuality, I uh, screwed up some of the corners and got stuck behind some of the slow AI cars. Although this run's going a lot better this time. Depending on what we cross the line at. 12 seconds? Okay, yeah. We're definitely moving along a lot better this time around. I believe it was 15 seconds last time. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Piccadilly in, in real life is cool and all, but the Call of Duty map is terrible. <laughs> Just saying. Now, if we get a Miami track in GT7, I'm going to lose all the time because I do not like Miami and, and the new Black Ops. Not a fan. I still think Piccadilly is the worst map, but yeah. My exit was shit. My entry was good. Okay, what's the gap now? Seven seconds, okay. We can win this. Oh wow, the 147 got around the golf. Wonder what happened to the golf in the first corner. Sorry, little Punto. Smack the wall for your own benefit so you can win. I got like half of his advantage down. I 
I'm right behind him. Let's not screw up this final corner this time. Oh, got him. That was a risky maneuver, but I got it. And there we go. Race number one complete. I beat the more OP car with the underpowered car. Yay. It's almost as if GT6 is nothing but that. And there we go. We got our three stars. And let me go ahead and save the replay for thumbnail purposes as usual and move on to race number two. So here we are at Brands Hatch Indy and the Megan and the Golf are gone. So a much easier field to deal with this time around. If we get this for Spa, we'll be good. But if we get that Renault Megan back for Spa, then we're going to have to upgrade the car, considering that the long straightaways are going to be a nightmare for this thing. Otherwise, it's more or less the same field as last time around. Why is a Countryman here? That's not even a... Oh, I guess it's a hot hatch. This isn't a compact car race. I forget. It's hot hatches. I get the two mixed up all the time. Although they... They could both be the same thing, I suppose, in some circumstances. Like, that's the thing. The Delta's considered a hot hatch. In this game, and PGR2, and I keep forgetting that it's a hot hatch and not a wagon. It's the shape. The shape gets me all the time. Seven seconds behind. Not really a big gap. That was a weird line that the golf was taking through the corner. Why is there an Audi TT here? Is that... I thought that was a coupe. That's a coupe, not a hot hatch. And there's a Fiat coupe in the field. I just noticed that right now. That's quite strange, but okay. Not gonna really complain about it. If it makes our life easier, then screw it. There's that Volvo. Only one more lap to go. He's in striking distance. Should we be able to get him in T2? Or actually, we can get him T1 on the outside. Beautifully done. His exit was complete garbage. And it should be smooth sailing from here. And yep, indeed it is smooth sailing. Just getting around him alone. Five second gap. The coupe is right on his ass, but it doesn't matter. Because we win Brands Hatch Indy. So as usual, skip the replay and we get our... 19,000 credits. I was holding down the pedal, which is why I wasn't able to skip through. And our three stars. Now move on to race number three. The Megan is back. The Scirocco is here too. That's even worse. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do one thing to the car. We'll drop some weight. I think that'll be good enough. Just for acceleration. We don't really need speed, but let's see how this goes. Go ahead and do roof cam for this race. There's another Punto in the field, but that's the older regular model. 
I'll probably use that thing in Gran Turismo 4 at some point in that game. Don't know where, though. I like that car. Actually, I'm a fan of hot hatches in general. Like, I was that one weirdo in, in Europe when, when I went that looked at all the hot hatches in amazement. Like, oh, wow. An older model Ford Fiesta ST. We didn't get this. Or, like, an older Focus RS. Wow, we didn't get this either. Very cool. Okay, this car's a six-speed. I didn't know that. I thought it was a five-speed car. Man, he took a weird line through the corner. I think that's the two... Uh, I think that's one and two just exiting this hairpin. Yeah, it is. Maybe the stage one weight reduction helped. Maybe it's not, but I think we're doing a lot better than I was expecting. I was expecting the longer straightaways to be just overkill for the other cars against us. TD early on the brakes. Sorry, buddy, but you're just kind of sitting there. And they're fighting. The Scirocco is giving the McGann a hard time. He's our best friend right now. Six seconds behind. I'm going to go ahead and take a wild guess here and say we're going to be eight seconds behind by the start finish. Unless they screw up the chicane terribly. Oh man, you can just see them going away from you. In the little track map on the top left corner of the screen. and It's kind of painful, but... They're not that far away. Oh no. Oh, actually, okay. I thought I... I thought I broke too late, but I guess my braking wasn't that bad. Where are we now? Seven seconds. Okay, we only lost 1.7. Okay, not bad. I was looking for the meter marks on the left. Too used to Gran Turismo Sports Spa. Going through Eruge and Radeon now, but can we close the gap here on this corner alone? I'm trying to put as little input as possible on the wheel. I want to carry as much speed as I can. Yeah, it looks like further upgrades might be necessary here. What's the gap now? Ten. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're screwed. Unless we can somehow find 10 seconds here, which could be possible because of rubber banding and slow AI. I don't see us winning. I need to pull my paddles down and start stroking. Stroke! Stroke! Second gear is not necessary. Yeah, okay. They lost a lot of time through there. I need to get them before that little stretch of road before the bus stop. I got him. Oh, yeah. I'm winning the race now. See, he's stopping in the middle of the corner. Like, you don't need to do that.
Yeah, we got this in the bag now. They're probably going to catch us here, but as long as I do some defensive driving, we should be good. Let's keep an eye on that mirror. Shiraco is right there on his on his gearbox. Nope, not anymore. The McGann is starting to pull ahead now. Can you go for a move? Nope, he thinks twice about it. Smart man. He runs wide! Oh no! <laughs> Here comes the Shiraco. Can he get him? For P2? Let's see. Under braking, perhaps? No. Oh! They're side by side. Can he get him? Oh no, he can't. Womp womp. Doesn't matter, we win. I want to say that the weight reduction helped out big time. Because that little bit of acceleration that we gained from reducing the weight was probably crucial to our victory here. I'm going to save a replay here, although I wanted a screenshot from London perhaps. Um, I think that bus stop with uh, the Scirocco side by side with the Megan would be a nice thumbnail. We'll see. Of course, I have to go in and manually mess around with the camera and see what works best and stuff. So three more championships to go in the National A section, not counting the one makes and the missions we still have to do. And now we are at 36% of the way down. Getting oh so close to that 50% mark. So thank you so much for watching this episode of GT6, guys. Next time on the LP, we will be doing the Schwarzwald League. Any Germans, I apologize for my shitty pronunciation.